welcome back to What Are Team Nibs with General Disturbance. This rather colourful batch of tinning on 155.58 is the Tier 10 French SPG. It's located on the south spawn of Serene Coast and it's under the command of Case Kouyevate. And well, he's got a 155mm howitzer at his hand and he's now going to use it on the enemy. Okay. The hull of this RT is actually based on the M48 pattern, uh, but it's actually quite a bit uh, faster. I've noticed that there's a fault actually with the replays, and for some reason I think every time they run, um, you don't hear the engine sound of the vehicle right at the start of the battle, but shortly after it actually commences, it suddenly comes to life and you start hearing the engines. I think we've suddenly started hearing them. Okay, well, he's got a three-shot autoloader, and he's just finishing off the reload. It's around about 42 seconds, I think it is, for a reload, but he might have a shorter one. Okay, three shots ready now, 10 seconds between each shot. He's waiting for the first sign of a tracer from the enemy. He's expecting one of them to be amongst those bushes. At least I would expect them to be there. But in the meantime, he spotted a Leopard 1, who's fairly close. Direct hit! And a big hit! He managed to get a penetrating shot there on the Leopard 1. 741 hit points because he hit the rear of the vehicle. And the guy's just been killed by our Jack Batchat 25 ton. Now, these 155mm rounds will do 750 alpha and penetrate 48mm of armor. So he actually got a low roll with that last shot. Fires another one in at the IS-4. All he does is stun him. And unfortunately, we lose the E-50M. He was taken up by the enemy object 277. who's just there on that corner. He fires one in. And after that, he hits the IS-4 for 300 and... Was it not 300? It was 179 hit points, but 346 hit points of stun assist. Waiting for the reload to complete. Case Kuyevate is not carrying any premium rounds in this battle. He's totally relying on standard ammunition. Now, some people like the Bat Chat because of its autoloader, the fact that it can fire these shells the way it does. Oh, that gorilla is suddenly realised, woken up, that there's a T100 LT sitting behind him, shooting him in the ass, and yeah, he's gone. Okay, we're now trying to get a shot there on an IS-4. And instead we stun two tanks, the 60TP and the IS-4. It's a difficult shot, but he's lining up the next one. Oh, he's got a red line when he tries to aim slightly to the left. Oh, he got a fire there on the 60TP. 253 from the initial impact and 95 afterwards. And I think that was a premium fire extinguisher went off. He s puts another round into the rear of that 60TP. Doesn't get another fire, though. Rather a pity, because normally when you get a fire like that, you bust the fuel tanks. And that's what sets light to the vehicle. And if you fire in again and get a subsequent fire, they normally die. The IS-4 there also got a fire. And he's lost virtually all of his hit points now. Right, there's one of the enemy arty. It's the Batch at 155.58. He's on the island. He's just fired one round there. He's probably lining up another shell, but at the moment, Case Kuyevate is waiting for his reload to complete. Almost there. Almost. Okay, he's loaded. And he fires his first shell in the blind shot. I think that enemy Bat Chat went behind the rock just after firing that last round so he can reload. And in the meantime, Case has decided he's going to attack this uh, 60 TP. Gets him in the rear. He takes another shot. So we've picked up some stun assist. And the next shot goes into the breach, but the enemy is dead. Unfortunately, we also lost the T100 LT because they've got a T5051 just on that corner. But he did get a hit on that guy for 260, and now he's relocating. There are three tanks up on the enemy at the moment, so they are doing extremely well. I must admit, that is a quite a colourful camo scheme for the uh, Batchat 155.58. <laughs> oh, 
Oh, he almost flips it there. You need to be careful not to flip your vehicle because uh, we found out today that you can be penalised if somebody tries to come to your rescue. The person who comes to your rescue might actually be penalised if they're trying to put you upright and they fail to do so within the allotted time. You might end up taking a penalty for it, so they might decide not to come and rescue people in the future. That shot hits the Badger, does 281 hit points of damage. One more shell. Oh, two more shells. Sorry, he's he was actually at the end of a reload. And that one... All it did, it appeared to do, was stun him, but it, it didn't even scratch. And I don't believe a, a 155mm round would not even scratch the vehicle. That is absolutely ridiculous. Wargaming needs to fix that, because uh, we're getting far too many arty rounds hitting targets and just bouncing off or not even doing any damage whatsoever. And of course, an arty round wouldn't do that. They would literally make the vehicle disintegrate. I know this is not a simulator, it's actually just an arcade game, but come on, what, some real, real war, some realism when it comes to arty rounds, they would literally make tanks fall apart the moment they were struck with a direct hit. He fires his last round, oh no he does, he's not in reload yet, he's still reloading. And we can see now it's 46.68 seconds on the reload, or is that 88 seconds? Fires his first shot at the Badger, gets a direct hit. I think he's going to do the same again. The enemy rt has been spotted, but our Leopard's going after him. Oh, he gets a kill shot with his next one. And there's only one enemy left. It's an Object 268. And he's lining up a shot. Fires one in to try and stun the guy. And the shell arrives just too late to do any damage. And it's all over. So, reasonably, reasonably good battle there by Case Courier 8. Let's have a look at the uh, uh, end of battle stats and see how he came off. Well, he got his first mark of excellence, so he's actually showing consistency with his damage now. He's got a second class tanker in the game and also a bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits. But I suppose the best thing about this battle is the fact that he did get his first MOE, which is very nice. One ring on your barrel, but uh, more to get. Of course, another two to get. But uh, he is showing consistency. Yeah, that's a nice amount of damage. Let's have a look at team score and see where he came actually in the table. Well, he didn't get the highest damage in the game. That went to the Batchat, one, uh, Batchat 25 ton. He got 3,872 hit points of damage. But even he did not pick up a high caliber in this game. Uh, Case actually managed to get the second highest damage with 3,291. And the third highest damage was actually the Batchat 155.58 on the enemy team with 3,132. Not that much less than Case. And uh, when it came to kills, we can see that the Batchat 25 ton was matched by the AMX 13105 and the IS-4. All had three kills apiece. Two kills the Leopard 1, T100LT, and the only enemy on the enemy uh, team who managed to get at least more than one kill is their Object 277. When it came to base XP, though, it was the IS-4 that did the best with 945. 872 goes to the Batchat 25 ton. 852 goes to the AMX 13105. And Kay's, well, he's a little further down the table, actually in fifth position on this occasion. 808 base, but I don't think he'll mind about that whatsoever. He didn't get that much in the way of stun assist. We'll see that in a second. 15 shots fired, 7 direct hits, 2 penetrations, and 15 splash. I suppose he was lucky, really, in the sense that he got penetrations, because you don't normally see them. But he did get a nice one on that leopard, right in through the side at the rear of the vehicle. And um, that helped that guy to be taken down fairly quickly, because he was a really serious threat. 3,291 hit points of damage, all of it done at more than 300 meters. He hit six of the enemy, killed one, so he narrowly missed out on getting a confederate. 311 hit points of damage assistance, plus 1,502 hit points of stun assist of 17 stuns. I suppose if, if he'd actually got a little more stun assist, he might have actually ended up with a first class or even an ace. On a premium count, he earned 38,797 credits, got 50,000 credits from personal missions payout, and after ammunition, resupply, and consumables, took away 71,396 credits profit. He got 808 XP, times two for the first victory, and took away 2,424 experience points altogether. 
So nice to get the first mark on your barrel, but now you've got the uphill battle to try and get two marks. And then of course the virtually impossible struggle to get three. It can be done. We've got members of the group who've done it. So yes, you've got no excuse. You have to get it. But well done to Kays for, for this uh, game and thanks for sending it in. If you enjoyed that replay, please give this video a like and do subscribe to our channel. And thanks for watching.